So let's do it. Let's do our Colin right, Colin wrong on a Monday. Here we go. Where Colin was right. Blazing five, four and one, uh, third winning week in a row. We picked Miami to beat New England. We said Arizona was going to beat the Eagles. We we uh, we picked Washington to keep it close but lose. And we got a little lucky on New Orleans late. So for the first time this year, we are over 500. I've never had a losing season. I This means a lot to me. 37, 36, and 2. And I'll sprinkle in a couple picks over the weekend. Where Colin was wrong. I remember when Josh Allen got drafted of the five quarterbacks in the first round, I said, he's got the biggest bust potential. Yeah, that's not happening. He may be the third best quarterback in the league. He is on fire. First of all, in college, in his rookie year, he was just inaccurate, like like below bad. Now he completes 69% of his throws. Folks, do you understand what he did this weekend? He dropped 48 points on one of the best defensive coaches in the NFL on the road, off a win over the Steelers. 48 on Vic Fangio, who is absolutely one of your top five or six defensive minds in the NFL. He ain't Belichick, but he's really good. And this thing, they had stuff called back. I, this kid is absolutely on fire. I never thought this early he would be this good. Some of it's coaching, but I was wrong. Where Colin was right. Three weeks ago, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens lost back-to-back games to New England, Tennessee. Everybody bailed. Not Uncle Colin. I doubled down and said, Lamar's the best athlete in the league. He wins a lot. He's young. Give him time. Since those losses, he's 3-0, six passing touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns, 120 passer rating, and completing 71% of his throws. And by the way, the Jags have played a lot of good teams close. That thing was a beat down yesterday. Here's my takeaway on Lamar. Not everything has to look the same to be successful. The dude wins 78% of his games. And he's younger than Joe Burrow. He's never going to be Mahomes from the pocket. But I got to tell you this, 99% of the players that have ever played it can't run that offense. And he's accurate enough to win 78% of his games. I like it. Where Colin was wrong. I whiffed on the Vikings. I mean, good. I had them winning their division. They're a mess. They made Mitch Trubisky look like, uh, you know, Favre yesterday. David Montgomery ate him up. I like Mike Zimmer. Kirk Cousins is capable. But this, they're just not right. Now, some of it is injuries and free agent losses on the defensive side. And so they weren't going to be as good defensively. Yesterday, they were atrocious. And they have some bad losses. I mean, the Dallas loss was bad. Um to Andy Dalton. They, they got blown out by Atlanta. So you guys think I missed on my Steeler pick. This is actually my worst pick. I com- And I like this organization. I completely whiffed. I thought the Vikings would win their division and win playoff games. Where Colin was right. I always tell you with Jared Goff, comfortable, you ain't beating him. Uncomfortable, watch out. Yesterday was classic golf. Jets put pressure on him. No quarterback in the NFL except Baker Mayfield goes from good to bad with pressure like Goff. In a clean pocket, his passer rating is 102, 107. In a under pressure, it's 46. And yesterday's the prime. This is why I wouldn't touch this game, because the Jets have a very good run defense, and I thought, just stay away from this game. This has, like, ugly Ram performance in yesterday. This is what Goff is, and I like Goff. But this is why they have to address their offensive line. Under pressure, he is very, very weak. With composed, he's like a pro bowler. He throws a beautiful ball. But this is what Goff has become, and it's fairly predictable. Where Colin was right. The Jonathan Taylor draft pick by the Colts. I went on Instagram yelling and screaming. I love the pick. I thought it was one of the best second-round picks ever. He's become the dog. Now, it's taken a while. Early in the season, we didn't have a preseason. Joy and I talked about this. You got. You can't judge rookies the same. They're going to be lost in September. But in the last four games, he's got four rushing touchdowns. He's now a top 10 rushing back in the NFL. He is a – I loved him at Wisconsin. He's a Burns, a track guy. He can run. He's powerful. He can make you miss. I said he was the best back out of the Big Ten since Zeke. I think he's comparable to, uh, to Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley's a little flashier. I think this kid's an absolute home run. It's just no preseason. It took him eight, nine weeks to get in this coaching staff into the groove. But what a pick and what a what a player this kid is. Where Colin was wrong. Well, a couple, three weeks ago, I had John Gruden coach of the year. Since then, he's lost four of five. And let's be honest, the Raiders are now consistently a bad December team. I mean, you're, you're talking losing to Atlanta by 37, losing to Tampa by 25. 
I don't have the answer for it, but you can go back even to his Tampa days. Something about what Gruden does, is it the the kind of uh, corrosive quarterback relationship thing? I don't know what the answer is, but I jumped the gun. They are a bad December football team. There's no other way around it, and that's on the coach. Well-coached teams get better late, not worse. Where Colin was right? I said when the Seahawks went and acquired Carlos Dunlap from the Bengals, I said that kid's been buried for years. Long athletic. He's going to solve Seattle's big problem. Well, he's been terrific. In fact, since Jamal Adams came back from injury and Carlos Dunlap has arrived, Seattle's defense, I think, is top two in the NFL. He's got four and a half sacks in six games. He is super athletic. And you know what? When you watch him play, he plays like a young player. A lot of defensive linemen's motors are hit and miss. Uh, Dunlap's one of those guys where he just, he is going constantly. He's a good kid and a great player in a bad franchise. And this happens. He just got buried and it didn't work. But he has been exactly what Pete Carroll and John Schneider thought he was going to be. He has resurrected a bad pass rush into one of the top four or five pass rushes in the NFL. Where Colin was right. Jimmy Garoppolo, say what you want. He won in college. He won in New England. He wins in San Francisco. The Niners with Kyle Shanahan, who we acknowledge is a great coach. They're now 2-6 and six this year without Jimmy Garoppolo. Got to the Super Bowl with him. Kyle Shanahan, a great coach, has won six NFL games as a coach without Jimmy Garoppolo, 6-26. and 26. And I think we all understand that starting quarterback, backup quarterback, there is a gap. But one of the things I like about Garoppolo, he's not into stats, he's kind of a winning player, is that he'll make mistakes, but he's a, he'll just let it rip. He's not a guy that hesitates in his body language. Maybe it's because he's such a good-looking kid. He's always had confidence. He plays with a lot of confidence. Now, when he struggles, Kyle Shanahan just takes the ball out of his hands. But he's never been a kid affected by a loss, affected by a pick. He comes out, lets it rip, and he is – they lost to Dallas yesterday without Jimmy Garoppolo and had four turnovers. Where Colin was right. Finally, a lot of rights this week. Everybody wants a college football playoff. And I've always said, folks, it doesn't matter. If we have four, you'll complain about two that didn't make it. If we have eight, you'll complain about nine and ten. So now Ohio State gets in, and everybody wants AM and Oklahoma in. It doesn't matter. In college basketball, they let in, what, 68 teams? And Dick Vitale and Jay Billis are screaming about, you know, some directional school, 69. Everybody always feels like, as big as the country club is, the person that doesn't get in thinks he's being jobbed, robbed, or treated poorly. The college football playoff has never been this magic elixir to solve the problems. You still complain about one of the teams not getting in. I don't care who gets in at number four. It doesn't matter. You're just signing up to get your arse kicked by Alabama. Notre Dame's a 20-point underdog. a and would be a 17, 18-point underdog. Oklahoma, and I think Lincoln Riley's great, does not match up at all with Alabama. They don't. They couldn't stop them. So the and, and the college football rankings, I'm just fine with it. As long as you give me Ohio State, Bama, and Clemson, I don't care who the fourth is. It doesn't matter. They're all going to be huge underdogs to the three teams ahead of them. Colin right, Colin wrong. All right. Good stuff. How much time? Oh, don't even have time to get to other good stuff. I, I'm so blown away by Miami this weekend. Isn't it amazing? We all know that you need a bunch of stuff, but if you get the quarterback right and you get the coach right, Buffalo, three years ago, you couldn't have paid me to watch Buffalo. Miami, three years ago, you couldn't have paid me to watch Miami. I cannot take my eyes off the Bills and the Dolphins. You got the coach right. You got the quarterback right. And, and you know what's funny about coaching is uh, my next guest, Trent Dilfer, is a coach. I could never be a coach. But I can spot bad coaching. And I can spot good coaching. Watching the Bills Saturday and watching the Dolphins, these are so smartly tuned. Such Miami is so resourceful. They were missing four of their top five scrimmage yards. Isn't it just a pleasure to just like watch good, good football? football? <laughs> it really is. Everybody's like, you just love football. No, I don't. I don't love crappy football. I love watching Buffalo and Miami. And I said this for 20 years. New England was, was boring. But every New England game looked the same. Like like three penalties or less, four penalties, no turnovers. They do one trick play a Sunday, and they beat you by eight. 
and you, you'd, you'd, you'd walk off the turf if you're the opposing team thinking, we have better players than them. Like, like I just love what Miami's doing right now and what Buffalo's doing.